I am Thomas Christopher Alford. In number nine, Clarence Mangan Road, Donor Avenue, Dublin. My mother died when I was about seven. My father put me into Artane School, swearing before a judge in court that he couldn't leave a crumb under my nose. I was in in 1932 and came out around 1944, well, December 1940. What I'm putting on here is a true story of the time I spent in Artane Industrial School. The brothers' names I remember in the school were Brother Jerome, five foot ten, six foot, slight build, Brother Truman, uh, five foot ten, Brother Kylie, either spelled K I L E Y or K Y L I E, tall, slim, six foot, Brother Farrell, who handled the sports and the hurling team, well built, and the same five foot ten, thereabouts, very strict. Brother Ambrose was an old man bent over. He used to find the jobs for the boys when it was time for them to leave. Mr. Riley was in charge of the shoe shop and taught you your trade. Thin man with glasses, nickname Rasher. The man in charge of the bots was nicknamed Jigo, G-I-G-G-O. Mr. Hickey was the band teacher. I knew that because my brother went into the band. The brother in charge of the sewing room was a small man who had a dog, a small something like a Scotty that when he walked down the long room, the dog used to walk between his legs for every step he took, through one leg and out through the other. The thing I remember mostly about Artane, which sticks in my mind and has done ever since I came out of the school, was the beating I had from Brother Kylie outside number seven school. I had taken some sweets down to my brother who was in the 14th division and I was in the first or second, not remembering which. The whistle went. When the whistle went, we had just a few seconds to get back into our proper divisions. In getting back to my own division, I didn't beat the whistle and was caught outside number seven school, which brother Kylie was standing outside. He stopped me came over and beat me on both shoulders till I was on my knees and couldn't, couldn't straighten up. The main instant I remember of this is that when I first met, went into Artane, I was nicknamed the Beller because I knew a bit about pigeons and we were talking about pigeons flying over the playground or the parade ground. And because I mentioned the beller, one of the lads christened me the beller. After I had this bashing from Brother Kylie, I was bent over and I couldn't straighten myself up. A few days later, while I was still bent, I had lost my nickname of the Beller and was called the Hunchback. And that stayed with me until I left Artane School. While in Artane, I made two good friends. One was Tom Brown, little short fella. And the other one was Tommy Farrell. We used to play handball together every day 
and we always tried to get in the center alley so the ball wouldn't go out of play because we had the side walls to play with. During that period I was there, Tommy Farrell ran away. When he came back, he got the Cathy Nine Tails from Brother Kylie. I was put in charge of Tommy Farrell, known in the school as Pee Wee, because he took off Pee Wee from the picture boys town which you went to see in O'Connell Street. I had to bathe his back every day with a portion of salt in the water and didn't come out of the dormitory till all the other boys were gone because we had to wash or I had to wash his back sort of privately. Very shortly after this, his parents took him out of the school and I didn't hear anything more about him until 20 odd years later when I went back to Dublin. I visited Wexford with my sisters. I went to see Tommy Farrell, had a cup of tea with his grandmother and grandfather in the house. But Tommy wasn't interested in talking about our thing. Didn't seem to want to know anything about it. Didn't seem to want his parents or his grandmother or grandfather to talk or hear anything about it. It was just bitten in the bud. He had two shops with his brother in Wexford and was very good at painting. That was the last I saw of him, which was probably 15 to 18 years ago. We had a PT instructor. One day in particular, I remember I was standing not far from the doors, which was the entrance to the PT room and the baths. And this big fella, he was huge. There was a lad standing at the door and they were swing doors. And he saw this lad standing there and he let the swing doors go on his fingers. And the lad yelled in pain, but he didn't even look back. Carrying on from there, when we went into baths, we all went into single cubicles, facing the shower. When the shower came on, there was Jay's fluid in the water and there was too much in it, which if you didn't wash your eyes, it burnt your eyes, or it smarted your skin. And if you tried to back out of the baths, Jigo was there with a belt and belted you back in again. This would happen time and time again. You would walk up and down the baths. Now, when you go into the baths, you'll hear the water flow. Head, neck, face, ears. Keep the brushes going. Every brother in the school had something to beat you with. If it wasn't a leather strap, which was a good half an inch thick, made of all different pieces of leather on top of one another and stitched together, that made it near enough a solid piece. Otherwise, they had a round stick I'd say 14 to 16 inches long, which is the one that Brother Kylie beat me with. It didn't matter when or where, but you didn't know when you were going to get a bang of one of these sticks. And it was always for something or nothing. 
I had a terrible stomach ache one day and was doubled in two. I didn't know how I got it or what gave it to me. But I went to one of the brothers and he sent me down to the infirmary. When I got down there, they gave me this castor oil and I took a sip and I said, I can't take it. And they shoved it down my throat and another spoonful after that. And I got outside the door and was sick as a dog. I have never in my life taken castor oil again or anything that has got oil in it. It finished me. In the long room, which was always polished for visitors, we had to go in there daily and polish all the furniture. And I mean polish it. And down on our hands and knees with the something, I think it was Johnson's whack polish, but it was uh, like a reddish polish. We had to get down and rub and rub and rub on our knees for hours on end till you could see yourself in that floor. All for the visitors. When I got to the age of 14, they asked me what trade I wanted to do. I said I wanted to be a carpenter. So I always wanted to work with wood. They told me there was no vacancies in the carpentry. There was two lots of carpentry. There was hedge carpentry, they called one, and the other was house carpentry. I wouldn't have minded which. I just wanted to be a carpenter. They said, there's no vacancies. Will you go into the shoe shop? Well, I thought there's no option. So I'd go into the shoe shop. I went into the shoe shop. Mr. Riley was in charge. I learned to make shoes inside out. I got that good when I started. But Mr. Riley said, don't leave this trade. You're very good. You're very good at it. So I stayed in the shoe shop. The dormitory, which I slept in, there was probably 60 boys there. I was put in charge of the shoe room. It was my job to make sure that all the boys' shoes were kept in good repair. And it was also my job to report to the brother any shoes that had been left in their pockets. Every boy had three pair, two pair of working shoes and one pair of for Sunday when we used to walk up the road and then home again. In reporting any of the shoes that were worn to the brother in charge of the dormitory, I had also had to have in mind that that boy would be in for a beating because he did not report that his shoes were worn and needed repairing. The toilets. The toilets were an absolute disgrace for anyone to have to go in there and use the toilets in such a state where, as a rule, there was little or no paper. The excrement was all over the walls where the boys had to use their fingers. When this got too bad, they whitewashed it over with whitewash. That is all that was ever done. The clothes, the clothes we wore were grey trousers 
and as far as I can remember, it was a blue or black jacket. We had special clothes, which were kept clean for when we went out for the walk on a Sunday. I cannot remember at any time having any underclothes, whatever. All I can... Thinking back now, I was in an industrial school which was run by Catholics. I just cannot believe that they were Catholics. They would have been better than a German prisoner of war camp treating the prisoners. From the time I left Artane at 16, I didn't go to church again until I was 43. And that was because we had no children, we couldn't have children, and we wanted to adopt. To adopt the children, I had to go to the Catholic Society. They asked me who my parish priest was. I said, I've got no idea what church it was that I belonged to. I've got no idea. So they asked me to go back to the church, the nearest church to me, find out who the priest was, and they would see to it. Eventually, we adopted two children, a boy and a girl. One now 33 and the other now 31. And very good jobs and brought up in the Catholic faith. I swore when I got out of our time that within a couple of years I would go back and kill that brother Kylie or really do him a lot of damage. I was full of aggression and was full of aggression for 20 years while I was married for the first 20 years. My wife got me out of that. Thank God. And we adopted the two children, as I said. But I never got a chance of meeting him again, which I thank God now that I never did. A man was a pig. I am sitting doing this tape on and off over the last three to four days. And I get choked every time I pick it up. The aggression that I felt, I don't think I've even lost it now. My shoulders are still hunched from the beating that I got from Father Kylie. Even my daughter saying to me for years, Dad, straighten your back up. Little did she know how I got it in the first place. I don't think I have anything more to say, but I will never forget how I was treated. As I picked this up, this tape recorder for the last four days, I have choked and cried with it. So I hope this gives you my life when I was a boy in our town. Goodbye and thank you. Thomas Alford.